Welcome to K.L. Dixon Ministries International. Knowing Christ in depth and making him known at all costs. KLDMI is a non-profit ministry organization raising and impacting Christian leaders for community transformation through leadership trainings, believers conferences, and gospel crusades. Join our faith in action today for youth development through academic scholarships and grooming with our King of Kings College. Child development, which we do in partnership with Compassion International. Community transformation through radio programming with daily Gospel of the Kingdom broadcasts. Community outreach to the abject poor and disaster response. And the ongoing construction of a 10,000 seater multi-purpose ministry complex. Partner with us today by following the contacts on your screen. We wish to greet all of you, dear viewers, and we're blessed to have you always, and we appreciate your remarks on our Facebooks and uh, on all other means of communic as you see them on uh, the screen. We're proud to be people that are living in such a generation, and there's no better generation than this where great wonders are happening, both in a negative way and in a positive way. Uh, we're in a human rule. And of course, uh, human wisdom is much less than the wisdom of, of God. Uh, uh, and uh, wherever man rules without Jesus, the devil rules with him since the creation of the world. Well, well today we, we have a special theme, uh, brethren, uh, in the book of Matthew, chapter 16, verse 17 through 19. And the theme is Jesus, Christ, the rock of ages. Okay, take it, Christ, the rock. Jesus answered, and verse 17, he says, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Bajona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Verse 18, and I, I also said to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 19, and I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Father, we thank you that you are revelating and showing us Christ, the rock of ages. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go, get back to verse 17. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father who is in heaven. Do you know what uh, P Peter had just said? He said, you are Christ, the Son of the living God. The word Christ means you are the anointed, the Son of the living God. And, and, and in fact, let's go to verse 18, and it's, it's going to be much clearer. There. And I also said to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. Now, which, which rock is he talking about? The rock of ages is called Christ. He said, Buana Peter, Buana Peter, on this rock, Christ, I will build my church, and even the gates of head shall not prevail against it. Let me tell you something. People that worship demons, people that are in humanism, if you, the atheists, people that do not believe there is a God, the evolutionists, people that believe in change of things, they have failed to understand that these things change, but they don't change life. Life of the chicken has never been the life of a human being. Life of a dog has forever been a dog. The dog may change shape, but they still call dogs. They think and walk and do things as dogs. But when God created, he created all things into their species. And they have remained till today. And I just want you to know that whatever God, Adam called them, so they were. And Adam has never changed since the creation of the world. I want you to understand that when you come, today I, I was not going to speak about the three temptations that Jesus went through. But I can overlook there just by letting you know that Jesus went through the ten temptations. One was subsistence. And he overcame because uh, they came and told him that, look, if uh, you, you turn this stone into bread, 
Uh, and Jesus said, I don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of my mouth or the mouth of my father. So he went on, and, and the devil knew he's now believing too much in God. He took him at the pinnacle of the temple. He said, now that you believe in the scriptures, the Bible says that the angels will take charge of you. Let me push you, and the angels will pick you up. And do you know what he answered? He said, never test the Lord your God, because there are things that angels are not expecting. If it's an accident, they'll help you. But uh, God is not, no entertainer of fools. Then he said, okay, let's go and show you all the kingdoms of the world. He showed him everything. Now, the kingdoms of the world represents the riches of this world. The kingdoms of the world represents all the gold, the silver, the glory, you know, all the beauties of the things of the world that are passing away. He said, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all of this. Now, don't be so surprised that some people have more than enough. God has a capacity to give you more than enough. But if he doesn't, he has given you everlasting life. And you in Christ, you have everything. You're more than a conqueror. But there are people that are very proud of the things of this world. I have land, I have car, I have many. Those things you can get, but they're taking you nowhere because they're perishable in the kingdom of God. One day the Bible says that everything that can be shaken shall be shaken. So the, the, what cannot be shaken remains. What cannot be shaken is the word of God. Now listen to verse 18. And, and, and I also said to you that you're Peter. And on this rock, Peter, I will build my church. And the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. Now, when you look at some nations, uh, they have opened the businesses, they have opened buses, they have opened markets, they have opened uh, you know, supermarkets, they have opened, you name it, all different things. But why would some nations refuse to open the church? Because the church is not their good business. We bind the demons they worship. When we lift up our hands, the devil has no place to stay because we are the children of God. The Bible says whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We are, we are servants of the Most High God. Look at verse 19. And I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. We have the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. That's the kind of authority that we have. Children of God, I want you to walk into that authority. You'll be marginalized. Nobody seems to know you, yet everybody knows you. Nobody seems to understand your power, but everybody knows you're powerful. And listen to this. Your power is not imported from China. Your power is actually heaven operating on earth. Hebrews 10, 38 to 39. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, <laughs> my soul has no pleasure in him. Listen to this. The just. Who are the just? When you take Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you are scripturally and legally justified. And the word justified means you are righteous. Your righteousness is not out of works. It's out of grace. Grace has made you qualify for the kingdom of God. You are born again. That's the terminology we use. You are born again. Now listen to this when you understand that. Now the just shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. Look at verse 39 what he says. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. We are not those of you that misread the scriptures and they call themselves that they were in, uh, uh, what is it, uh, scripture union. Going into scripture union does not make you a Christian. It only makes you a student of the Bible. You can read it well or right. But what makes you a Christian is to be born again. You are born again. That means you were one time physically born. Now you are born again. You are spiritually born. You are a child of God. That's why the things of the world, yes, you leave them. You, you are a sojourner. When you are in an airport, transiting between uh, London and Dallas, it, it's hard to buy land in London airport. Because you, you're just passing through a pilgrim. In this world, we are pilgrim. So whatever we have, little or more, is more than enough. We are happy. And actually, let me tell you, children of God, that when you have money, serve the people. Bless the people. Give your tithes to the Lord and do the needful. 
Because God will bless you over that. Because all these things will pass away, but the word of God will remain. And praise be to God, you have the word of God. Let us look at uh, the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, and verse 1 and, and 6. This is what it says, 11. 11 1. Now face is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> uh, uh, one of our, of our associate pastors, she was diagnosed with... Uh, some symptoms of cancer. But I think it's very hard to convince her that she's sick. She, is, she believes by his stripes she was healed. Well, that one seems to be fake, but to her that's a reality, and to the scripture that is a reality. Because we have the evidence of things not seen as though they are seen. And whose report are you going to believe? It is the report of the Lord. We are rich. We are powerful. Does that one stop us from helping her? Does that one stop us from doing this? And No, it doesn't. But we must take the word of God higher than anything else. Let me tell you something. If you know what you are going through, don't be taken by the people that tell you, try the witch doctor, try this. The people of the world, money is their security. But you, God, is your security. Listen to this. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Get an evidence of the things that are not seen. In verse 6, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of those who diligently seek him. Listen to this. In the first place, you must understand that you are a product of God, the God that created you. Then the second thing you must understand, despite all the things that you, you, are, you are seeing, there is a God that is in church. There is a God that is in church. Men who come and go. Great men like Saddam Hussein, where are they? Great men like uh, Muhammad Gaddafi, where is he? Great men like Nebuchadnezzar. Great men like this guy from uh, uh, northern Sudan. Where are they? Things come and you do everything that you can do. But when the calendar for you to do something expires, man like this uh, uh, Pharaoh of Egypt, where is he? Where, where are great men like Herod? Their time came in past. But let me tell you something. One thing that cannot pass away is the word of God. Because it was, it is, and it will ever be. So let me tell you something. Uh, uh, David speaks a much deeper spiritual revelation. He says, I'd rather sleep on the door of heaven than to sleep in the houses of evil men. Evil men are hoarders. They have everything in abundance. And in that abundance, they have no joy because everything they have carries blood. Let me tell you something. We have a special blood, the blood of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I want us to take authority today. Things that we see in our country. We are the shepherds. We are the people that, we are watchmen. We cannot just sit there and watch. We must speak. Let us take authority over all the false spirit. These are the demonic spirits. All the strongholds in the air. Trace spirits. We need to break them into pieces. And we command them. The fire of the Lord be upon you. We take authority in the great mighty name of Jesus. Because whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Let me tell you devil, you better try. But you can never win. <laughs> because for us we are not trying to win. We are already winners. We are already more than conquerors. We just declare victory uh, uh, through Christ, the Son of the Living God. And in, in order for you to, in order for you to join this free victory, I want you to take this opportunity to believe Christ with your heart for righteousness. Now, would you imagine all your unrighteousness is taken away because you believed Christ with your heart? And to confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Savior. That means today you've been graced, you've been given mercy, you belong to God. I want you to take this and say, I believe with my heart for righteousness. I'm not ashamed of you, Lord. Forgive me of all the past and more especially when I hated you. Now I'm here to worship you and praise you. I'm not ashamed of you. Number two, confess Christ as your personal Savior. Say, Lord, I confess you as my personal Lord and Savior. I'm born again. I'm not ashamed to tell anybody. I am born again. Let me tell you something. There could be a nearby church Maybe you're in the United States, you could be in the United Kingdom, you may be in China, Japan, you may be in India, you may be in uh, Philippines or elsewhere, you may be in some parts of Africa, 
Listen to this. Find a Bible teaching church. Go. They will tell you all other details so that you may do all the righteous requirements and you get into the kingdom of God. For now, I bless you and I declare you healed. Your tumors, I command them vanished. Your brown eyes, I command them to see. And your deaf ears, I command them to hear. I pray that even dreams comes to you. You dream a special dream directing you to the great kingdom of God. I pray that you're blessed beyond a curse in Jesus' name. Amen.